ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the naukar corporation limited q2 fi24 results conference call hosted by philip capital as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded this conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call these statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict i now hand the conference over to mr vikram suryavanshi from philip capital india private limited thank you and over to you sir thank you sagar good morning and very warm welcome to everyone thank you for being on the call of naukar corporation limited on the management we are happy to have with us here today mr arun sharma chief executive officer mr prasun singh chief financial officer now i hand over call to mr singh for their opening comments over to you sir uh, thank you sir uh, good afternoon and welcome to uh, to you all uh, i'll begin the call by spending some time on the business performance in the september quarter followed by insights on the results of uh, q2 to 2024 yeah so uh, business scenario continued to be gloomy for exim trade in india in the past quarter the ukraine russia war continued to impact global trade and india did not escape the effects of this disturbance <clears throat> both imports and exports were sluggish on the back of the global trade scenario specifically relevant for our business was the dip in agro commodity exports which is suffering due to government disincentives including withholding export quotas for essential food commodities domestic trade in commodities contributing to a major portion of our rail movements was impacted adversely on account of monsoons in this quarter our businesses have however displayed resilience and we have posted good results so i will uh, speak about the uh, different businesses in brief and then i'll move on to the financial performance yeah so starting with the cfs business as mentioned earlier the imports and exports moving through dawa shiva port have shown a decline this has impacted the volumes at our cfs for exim trade we handled 16296 tus of export and 29789 tus of import in the quarter against 18132 tus of export and 28854 tus of import in the previous quarter <clears throat> and 24412 tus of export and 26461 tus of import in the same quarter last year overall exim volumes at cfs were down 2% from the last quarter and 9% from quarter 2 of financial year 23 Uh, so that is uh, what i have on the cfs business on the icd business uh, you would be aware that icd morbi uh, had received regulatory uh, regulatory clearances and we commenced operations in the months of february and march 2023 uh, the business is growing at a robust rate and new customer acquisition uh, also expansion of coverage of different commodities and different geographies within the saurashtra region is happening uh, region is happening as we expected the numbers recorded at morbi were expectedly uh, much higher than the previous quarter we were able to handle 7674 tus of export and 1183 tus of import as against 2065 tus of exports and 216 tus of import in the previous quarter and 251 tus of exports and 6 tus of imports in the last quarter of uh, FY23. This represents an increase of 288 percent this quarter over the last quarter, and of course, uh, I will not compare it to the last quarter of FY23 because that's a very big increase. Yeah, so uh, we'll not uh, talk about that. Uh, on the domestic business side, uh, the domestic business suffered in the last quarter on account of uh, monsoons. Uh, domestic rail transportation, uh, tra transportation. Uh, in general uh, historically it shows a dip in the monsoon months uh, the number of trains running on the domestic circuit from our somatne uh, cfs 
slash uh, uh, PFT it came down to 141 from 171 in the previous quarter. Uh, this represents a drop of 18% and is attributable to the impact of monsoons on the uh, on the domestic movement. Yeah. So uh, that is on the business side. Now moving over to the financial performance of the company in this quarter, uh, the operating revenue for the quarter stood at rupees 94.6 crores as against rupees 105.5 crore in the previous quarter and rupees 109.3 crore in the second quarter of last year. This represents a reduction of 10% from the previous quarter and 13% from the same quarter in the last year. The reason for this reduction is the overall reduction in business in the three segments, export, import and domestic, which we discussed earlier. Yeah. So uh, that's on the revenue side. The operating profit for the quarter reduced to rupees 35.6 crores in this quarter from rupees 37.8 crore in the previous quarter and rupees 41.6 crore in the same quarter last year. This corresponds to a reduction of 6% from the previous quarter and 10% from the same quarter last year. It is to be noted that the dip in operating profit is much lower than the dip in operating revenue. This is attributable to the improved operational efficiencies introduced in all our business lines as an ongoing activity. This has also in resulted in increase of gross profit margin to 38% in Q2 to, uh, 2024 from 36% in the previous quarter. Yeah. Uh, coming over to the EBIT, the EBIT for the quarter stands at rupees 5.5 crores, six, uh, that is 6%, down from rupees 7.5 crores, that is 7%, and rupees 20. Uh, that is uh, quarter and quarter and rupees 23.1 crore in the uh, in the last quarter of previous year. The reason for this reduction in EBIT from the last year is the high depreciation, employee cost and other expenses incurred on account of ICD Modi project completion and uh, operations commencement with business still being in a ramp up phase. Uh, depreciation has also increased significantly from the last quarter as fixed assets are being capitalized at Morvi. Uh, then coming over to the after-tax profit, uh, for the quarter, the after-tax profit stands at rupees 2.04 crore as against 3.73 crores in the last quarter. The profitability is reduced from 4% to 2%. The major reasons for this reduction in profitability is the reduction in volumes. Uh, we spoke about it. The increase in depreciation, interest cost, cost and uh, interest cost for the debt assumed to fund acquisition of vehicles and other assets, etc. So, uh, so that is uh, what has caused this reduction in the uh, in the pact. Now, uh, finally, concluding on the business outlook, in the coming couple of quarters, the exports of agro commodities is expected to revise as government is expected to release export quotas uh, for, for uh, expo fresh export quotas. It is also evident that domestic rail transportation is improving pan India as the monsoons have receded. However, uh, general commodities exempt trade is not expected to show much positive movement as of yet. We therefore expect that revenue as well as profitability will show some improvement over the next couple of quarters. Significant improvement in revenues as well as profitability is expected over the medium term as the business at Modi matures. Yeah, so that is all from now. I now hand over the call back to Mr. Bakram. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, we'll have move to the, I think, question and answer session. Father, you can uh, continue. Sure. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mr. Nakul Joshi, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I have a couple of questions. 
starting about the exam imbalance for the second quarter like how has it improved and uh, so going forward in double stacking do you see any improvement over there yeah so if i understood your question correctly you asking about the exam uh, imbalance and uh, the second question was uh, how do you expect double stacking double stacking correct yeah so so the exam imbalance uh, at morbi specifically about uh, morbi i can tell you the exam imbalance is uh, uh, is something which is uh, uh, you know uh, which is very much evident and the projections the business projections that we have made are uh, you know um, are uh, uh, considering that imbalance yeah so that is expected uh, not to change significantly on the nava shiva side i uh, think that the exam imbalance is not so much of a issue or, or a problem and uh, we do not expect any further changes uh, on the exam imbalance in the nava shiva port also yeah so that is the two areas where we operate and we do not expect that uh, there will be any significant change in the exam imbalance in both uh, places having said that our business plans our projections are all uh, you know uh, made taking in account uh, this this uh, fact of the business yeah so uh, that is uh, there and uh, talking about double stack so double stack container train movement uh, as expected it will help uh, both the exim as well as the um, as well as the domestic uh, uh, cargo movement so we expect that as more and more uh, uh, you know double stack train movement uh, happens we will be able to uh, you know we will be able to uh, increase our operational efficiencies specifically with reference to uh, more the operations here yeah? so i hope that answers our question i also have with me uh, captain arun sharma who is the ceo anything that you would like to add uh, to this captain arun yeah with regard to double stack uh, you have to answer your question. am i audible yes sir you are audible yeah uh, to answer your question with regards to double stack uh, in general double stacking is going to help uh, the trade but uh, specifically for morbi i would like to highlight this that since our uh, uh, operation at morbi is little imbalanced so we are heavy on the imports when it comes to uh, morbi local and that is of 40 feet containers and uh, heavy on exports for the 20 feet containers so double stacking is not uh, uh, going to impact much on our profitability so that consideration has already been taken into our uh, business projections and also uh, and uh, in terms of price hike at the industrial level for uh, the rail business do you see any scope for that in the uh, h2 f24 no no uh, right now uh, we don't see we don't foresee it happening Uh, till the time the overall scenario changes in terms of road transportation things are going to be in the same manner and as you thank you that's it from my side thank you so much the next question is from the line of uh, mr rajiv jain from rj investments please go ahead um i'm audible yes yeah thank you sir for the opportunity so i have a couple of questions so uh, first is the could you throw uh, some light on the number of our double stacking trains as of the quarter and so how much of that figure is uh, related to our exam and the domestic business yeah so uh, uh, i will answer this question uh, in this this quarter the double stacking train was zero uh, and uh, as i said Uh, you know in terms of uh, moving a double stacking train on a domestic circuit it is uh, right now it's not possible because the dfc if you see it, it has not been started our domestic circuit uh, we are operating one domestic circuit between uh, navashiva that is our panvel facility and our uh, morbi facility uh, a regular train is being moved at least four to five movements are happening in a month that uh, we don't foresee it happening um maybe uh, a good good number of months maybe by 2024 end of 2024 when dfc would be operational then then only we will see double stack train moving on that particular track uh, as far as the um, uh, 
uh, exim trade is concerned uh, as i earlier mentioned that uh, our trade is little imbalanced on the 20 and 40 side uh, on on the 220 fit container uh, keep, keeping 140 is practically possible as far as the railway norms are concerned but then it goes beyond the weight what is being permitted so that is not possible uh, loading one a 240 fit container one on top of other that is definitely workable but then uh, there was one uh, new notification which had, which had come from uh, railway by which uh, there have been some weight restriction which has been put on so leave, keeping that also in mind we foresee that uh, this particular uh, double stacking for the 40 fit containers are also not going to be much of a help only when we are moving the empty containers the, that uh, impact is going to be there so Uh, if you ask me practically how much is going to impact us in future uh, my answer for the exim would be not much maybe 5% of the movement will happen on a, a double stack basis also sir uh, could you share uh, the empty running cost for the exim and our domestic business and also sir the capex guidance for uh, the remaining uh, year and for the next year uh, maybe not exactly the numbers or the range so uh, empty empty running cost is already taken in our costing you know when we are selling our product to our customers that is already been taken uh, into consideration uh, if, if even if uh, you know it is for domestic or the exempt trade for both of them uh, as far as the capex is concerned i will uh, ask Captain Prasoon, to please. Yeah. Uh, so on the capex, I think uh, significant capex that had to happen at Morbi has already happened. So as a direction, uh, what can be taken is that uh, there is no uh, significant fresh capex uh, uh, planned at Morbi as of now. Uh, what we are going to see is some uh, ongoing improvement activities that will happen at uh, both our facilities, but uh, nothing significant in terms of. Uh, Fresh capex is expected at uh, both our locations here, yeah? so uh, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so thank you, sir, for the opportunity. My question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Would like to remind participants that if you wish to join the question queue, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Rahul Jain, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. uh thanks for the opportunity sir uh so i have few questions from my side uh on firstly i uh, on the macro level i just want to understand what is the situation uh in terms of the export markets yeah so export market uh, macro level is, it is going to be uh subdued for the next one year because this is a election year india is still uh, 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 an agro based uh, economy where majority of export is happening in the agri commodities uh, in the coming year uh, till the election is over we expect that uh, the scenario is not going to change much uh, as far as uh, other commodities are concerned um, i bc like uh, which is going to impact us the tiles and ceramics that is quite robust it is expected to be in line with what is going on uh, so uh, i hope that answers your question apart from that i think uh, um, majority of exports are uh, in line with whatever is happening right now there is not much of a difference which is expected okay okay understood sir uh, secondly sir uh, are we planning to add more i think Uh, DS coming years or have you identified any places for those? Those. So, just want to know your uh, perception or perspective regarding the theme. So, right now, see discussions keep on happening, but there is nothing concrete which is, which is, you know at this point in time we can communi- communicate it to you. So, right now to answer your question, uh, the answer is no. so if anything just to add to what captain arun said if anything comes up uh, you know we'll uh, inform uh, uh, investors accordingly but uh, as of now there is nothing uh, concrete on the table there is nothing on the table yeah okay okay
And thirdly, sir, uh, so real is an asset for us. So are you having any plans on uh, buying more reacts in the coming quarter or in next financial year? And just wanted to know if there are any challenges in the availability of reacts in the market. Uh, so right now we have seven reacts of our own and eighth reac is coming this month. So, so far our capex on the uh, asset procurement in terms of rolling stock has already been over. Uh, we right now are seeking a uh, few more rates to include into our fleet, but that will be on a long term lease basis. Uh, but uh, having said that, we are open for it as in when any new businesses opportunity keeps on coming, uh, we will de definitely explore that. But right now, uh, all our uh, uh, KPEX on the train has already been done. Okay. So there are no challenges in No, that challenge of uh, uh, wheel availability is still there. But then, you know, we received our, all our trains as soon as the wheel availability started coming in. Uh, so right now, all our rigs have been delivered. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, to answer your question about the challenges, uh, there are challenges. And uh, by the time we again start thinking about procuring uh, rail assets, uh, we foresee that uh, things are going to be normalized. So uh, we don't see any challenge for us when, when, as and when we plan. Okay. And this is uh, one more thing. Can you please share your more uh, rate on the outlook for H2F at 24 in terms of the volume? So outlook, uh, uh, Captain has already, Prasoon has already informed uh, that uh, we foresee our cost is uh, optimized now. We are now, we only have to increase on our volume and uh, we foresee after the monsoon is over, domestic movement is going to improve and uh, with the agro commodity fresh quota uh, on offer probably, uh, you know, after Kharif. Uh, we foresee that uh, exports are also going to go up. So overall, uh, we have upward journey from here. Okay, okay. That answers my question, sir. Thanks. All the best. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Mr. Ashok Shah from LFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my questions and giving opportunity. Sir, uh, while going through our results, uh, there is a CWPI of uh, 145 crores, which is shown. So out of that, uh, what is uh, uh, maintenance capex and uh, new capex, and what is likely to be outcome of this uh, capex? So uh, let, me, uh, let me take that question. The uh, CWIP that you saw in the result, that is mostly, uh, it's not all, but uh, a major portion of it uh, pertains to the new capex which is happening at Morbi. Like I said uh, earlier in my, uh, in my briefing, as well as uh, in the answer to a previous question, uh, Morbi, uh, the project stage is uh, almost finishing and uh, you know we are coming into the operational stage. So all the capex that, is, uh, happen that has happened over there is uh, you know is, is in the conclusion stage and the CWIP that you saw in the results is majorly on account of uh, of Morbi yeah? and uh, there is some bit of it which is happening as improvement activities or maintenance capex at uh, Somatne. Yeah? So what's the yearly maintenance capex? Uh, yearly maintenance capex would be about. Uh, 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 let's say somewhere in the range of uh, uh, 10, uh, uh, 10 to 15 crores. So that means uh, almost uh, 125 crore will uh, go to the new capex? Uh, I will not uh, give the numbers out at present, yeah, but uh, uh, directionally uh, what you're saying uh, is correct, yeah. So uh, last year we, I almost, I think last year we sold some business. Uh, so out of that, uh, uh, how the allocation of the fund was done? Because at that time it was uh, stated that some dividend will be distributed. So uh, I, 
I remember uh, there was a discussion around this earlier as well, and uh, the management line at that point in time as well as today is that uh, we do not feel that there is a uh, you know uh, there is a possibility of dividend distribution at present. Uh, <clears throat> if the uh, if the dividend distribution possibility happens uh, in the near future, we will definitely uh, you know uh, do it. But at current uh, time, there is no possibility of dividend uh, distribution. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Uh, so regarding that, uh, sir, uh, we came out with the IPO it, uh, in a, in a year of 2015. At that time, uh, almost one one lakh eighty five shareholder subscribed to the IPO. And currently, it's less than a 60,000 shareholder only in a company. So over the last seven years, we are not able to create any wealth for the investors. So what's the outcome of this last seven years and how it's going to be in future? Because you are unable to declare, give some profit distribution over last seven years and also not going to give any profit distribution over next few years as stated by you. Sir, kindly give some uh, concrete comments and uh, give some uh, view on uh, what will be wealth uh, creation for the investors. Uh, uh, so, Mr. Shah, to answer your question, yeah, you are right. Uh, we came up with the IPO, but thereafter, if you see, the CFS industry per se has changed a lot. So, that time we, we were only into CFS business. Uh, later on, we came into ICD, and now from ICD, we have migrated to the rail operation, and within rail operation also, we are now diversifying it in the domestic. So the reason of uh, this diversification is that we had foreseen that these uh, the the hit on the profitability, which used to be there in the CFS industry, is bound to happen, and we saw that happening with the introduction of DPD. Uh, you, it has a you know, number of times in the past also it has been explained that how DPD has impacted badly the CFS industry. Now, in order to come out of that situation and uh, to reach to a level where we start delivering the uh, value to the shareholders, uh, I foresee that happening uh, in a near future because we, uh, with the success of TUM and then a company, we managed to become debt free everyone like uh, contributed in that and thanks for supporting in this this uh, cause of the company and now going forward what we foresee things are going in the right direction we have diversified well and uh, the va value to the shareholders will be available in uh, coming future uh, to uh, answer your question with regards to dividend we still maintain that whenever the opportune time comes, definitely uh, a dividend will be uh, offered to the shareholders. So we are doing a capex of uh, 130 crores approximately. So what will be turnover from release from this and uh, what will be break even and uh, cash flow to be realized uh, uh, from this uh, further capex? So, so these are all, uh, see, we are into uh, a business which has a very high capex and uh, has a high gestation period. But then uh, once the, uh, you know, revenue or realization starts coming in, then the business longevity is there. So with the current uh, way of ha business which is happening in India, we foresee this happening in uh, seven to eight years time when this uh, capex would be, uh, probably, you know, uh, realize or the payback will happen. But uh, uh, these are all, you know, a hypothetical number you are, you are asking. Uh, more concrete as in when we cross the path, that time only we'll be able to give you more clear picture. But current, currently, at what interest rate we are, we are paying to the bankers? Yeah, so we are uh, paying in the range of... Uh, uh, in the ballpark of 9%, yeah? Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. I would like to remind participants who wish to ask questions, please press star and 1 at this time. The next question is from the line of Krupa Shankar NJ from Evinders Park. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, good morning and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question was uh, more relating to the underlying uh, change in the industry. So we are seeing that the exports is uh, declining quite uh, substantially from the country. So, and um, given that, uh, you know, the imbalance is quite high, just wanted to get your sense as to what you picture with respect to volume growth in the industry, at least over the next uh, six to the 12 months. Yeah, so, uh, uh, Mr. Kripa Shankar, I think we have already answered this question, but just to briefly answer your question, uh, uh, since our exports are primarily at the country level, is uh, uh, agri-based, so yes, for the next six to nine months or one year, it is going to be subdued, but uh, as far as our uh, business is concerned at ICD Morbi, which is the export-dominated uh, market, we foresee things are moving in the right direction and uh, the volumes are coming up because it's a greenfield project, there's no other ICD in that uh, area. So we are seeing uh, good traction and a lot of business which is directly being going to the port uh, is expected to uh, get diverted through ICD. Uh, does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Uh, so, so sorry, I joined a little bit late. That's why I was not uh, privy to the previous uh, uh, you know, answer which you had given. But just to add on to this, um, then, then if I were to just look at the uh, TNPT ecosystem and uh, look at the, um, can, can you share what would be the proportion of volumes which is coming to the, um, uh, to the CFSs nearby by rail? And what would be your market share in that particular category? So in, in terms of export you are saying or in terms of? Overall, overall, import and export. So import with the introduction of DPD and, uh, uh, you know, the volume which is going to CFS, uh, I think, uh, not I think, but 80% of uh, the volume is now uh, being diverted onto DPD mode. So that, that leaves 20%. And in that 20%, there are close to around 32 CFSs which participate. And uh, uh, that close to around 3 to 4% is the import which is coming to uh, our CFS, uh, which is pure import. Uh, then uh, coming to the export side, um, this direct port exit is always available, uh, which is uh, the factory stuffing, the self sealing, all those, those and majority of the volume is going on to that mode. Uh, only the agri commodity or some cargo which requires a dock stuffing where factory stuffing and cell sealing permission is not available with the exporter merchant, that cargo only comes to the CFS, which is maybe 10% uh, of the overall volume, not more than that. And from among that 10%, uh, probably we command close to around uh, uh, 30 percent of uh, Navasheva's export which is going to the C to the CFS that comes to us. So uh, again, uh, that again boils down to the 3 percent of the overall exports. Got it. Got it. And, and, and my second question would be more relating to uh, the Morbi facility which you're setting up. Uh, you know, as a moat, what what you rate your, your moat as in that particular location given the proximity to port as well as uh, yeah, of course, the underlying uh, the uh, industry size is um, quite clear, but um, why would anyone choose an Alka or anyone, anything else? That's, that's, my, that's my question on market. So uh, I would uh, uh, give you some insights on the CFS, why customer chooses, or rather when I said that 30% of the export is still being commanded by Nauka, is because we have a railway siding, firstly. And uh, the cargo which is moving from the hinterland, if it is moving by road, that is some X cost. And if it is moved by rail, then the cost is less than X. Uh, firstly, that is an incentive to the customers why that cargo moves to Naukar. And secondly, uh, uh, there is something called uh, plant and quarantine, and um, which is required for the agro commodity. That uh, lab is also available at our uh, facility. So there are a couple of differentiation, what, what is available at Naukar, that is why the export cargo moves to us. Uh, thank you for answering that and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of uh, Tanishka from FWC. Please go ahead. Okay. 
can you hear me hello yeah you are audible okay thank you so much for the opportunity so my first question is the total realization for vapi including the sales of vehicles etc so i know uh, you all got 830 crores from adani uh, but was there anything over and above that no on the on the vapi business there was no other uh, realization so the sale uh, i think there was some sale of vehicles etc uh, so yeah, there yeah. was nothing yeah so what was that amount so the, uh, that amount was uh, close to uh, 2.5 uh, crores oh, sorry uh, uh, sorry that was the uh, that was the profit that we made uh, the exact amount capital 26 i think it was 26 okay 26 crore yeah uh, i think it is 22 uh, sorry tanisha it was 22 22 okay. uh, on which uh, uh, those vehicles were uh, sold yeah okay thank you and uh, what was the total investment spent on the existing pfts total investment on the existing pft yeah uh you mean the uh, morbi yeah both actually i wanted the break for morbi and uh, the cfs as well so cfs is uh, uh, the cfs investment has not taken recently it is uh, something which is very historical so uh, you know that cost may not be relevant but for uh, the morbi facility uh, and let me just uh, refer the numbers and give you the exact numbers yeah so as of now it stands at around 450 cr including the uh, wip the uh, cwip okay and so the uh, the total investment will be done in fy24 or fy25 so like i said uh, and i think this question i answered uh, before also uh, the major uh, investments that need to be made at morbi we are just about concluding so uh, you know there is no fresh major investments planned in morbi and whatever is there is uh, getting uh, concluded and uh, closed within uh, this area so majorly it will all get closed within fy24 there will of course be okay. some uh, some more additions and uh, some more improvement activities happening at morbi as at somatmo so that will be okay. uh, that will be what we will have okay thank you and my last question is uh, on the amount uh, remaining to be received for uh, all the asset sales we made at vapi so we have about 50 crores left and uh, i think it was mentioned that 25 crores will be received this year so is that is there any condition on that or is it definitely receivable this year and next year no no it is definitely receivable there is no condition okay fine okay great thank okay. you so much so just to correct my earlier uh, uh, answer uh, uh, this uh, sale of uh, trailers that was uh, uh, 173 cr in total okay so it, with the total realization for vapi including all of the vehicles would be 830 crores plus 170 odd crores yes uh, of which 50 cr is pending as you rightly mentioned Yeah. Okay, fine. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Varun Mishra, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, you are audible. Please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for taking my question. So, my first question was like. 
could you explain the recent volume declines in both CFS and ICT, like specifying the contributing centers, like what do you think and like what's the future outlook for this? So I think, uh, uh, sir, uh, I think we spoke about it in uh, uh, in the uh, briefing. So on the CFS side, uh, what has happened is there are uh, two uh, there are two different uh, business streams. There is the export and the import. So export whatever used to come to us is declined in the in the last quarter because of export uh, uh, quota uh, withholding by the government and there are other uh, for agro commodities and there are also other disincentives that the government has placed so that has impacted the exports at our uh, cfs the imports overall due to the global macroeconomic uh, situation the imports uh, have declined which is also evident in our uh, cfs over the last two quarters not one quarter but uh, last two quarters yeah so that is on the export and import at uh, cfs at ICD, uh, our ICD is into its third quarter and we are doing uh, robust growth over there as we had expected. So new customer acquisition is happening. We are, uh, you know, uh, we are venturing into new uh, areas. Uh, we are uh, bringing in new commodities to ICD. So ICD, there is no uh, reduction in uh, volumes per se. Yeah, so uh, that is the answer on the CFS and ICD. Uh, I hope I have been able to answer you. Yeah. Actually, my second question was, like, there has been an increase in competition in the industry due to, like, companies entering, like, Adani, JSW, and stuff. So, like, uh, what could we see, like, there are new players entering, so are they creating as competition in our, like, price segment, like, in our, in, the, like, the segment which we operate? So, do we create, like, they, have they created any competition for us? So, wherever we present in our geography, they have not. Uh, but uh, having said that, companies always venture into businesses which are, you know, which are probably... Uh, giving a good scenario or good uh, uh, projections to them. So, yeah, uh, JSW Infra has entered, Adani is there, uh, other companies are also there. So, they will keep on entering, but then, you know, when that you have to do business, you have to do business, simple. And exactly. our, our, just to add, our advantage is, uh, you know, uh, or is our geography so uh, that is very hard to replicate so that is a kind of a uh, barrier to entry in, in our geography yeah? okay okay fine sir my questions are answered thank you thank you so much the next question is from the line of uh, Shashank V who is an individual investor please go ahead hi I'm Audible Yes, please. Um, I missed the first half of the uh, call. I just want to know what is the breakup of revenue in Mumbai and uh, Morbi? Uh, I think that is something uh, breakup of revenue in between Mumbai and uh, Morbi. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have it handy at uh, present. But uh, we can definitely get back to you on that, yeah? No, the thing is, every time you put it in the investor presentation, no, you haven't put it this time, that's why I was checking. No, we have historically been putting the volumes only. I but you also write the turnover also over there. It's there in the, all the investor presentations in the last five years. The turnover, the revenue breakup, I don't recall that we have been putting in, in, uh, in previous... Uh, uh, investor presentations, but uh, yeah, your query is noted and we'll uh, get back to you on it, yeah? Um, should I wait for the answer or should I, how, how, is it, how are we going to get back to the answer? No, we'll, we'll get back to you on uh, email. On email, is it? Yes. We'll get back to you after this call. Um, please uh, also let me know about, uh, I think we were doing some operation at... Uh, uh, WAPI as well for the domestic operations, right? Uh, yes, that is uh, uh, near. That that is actually not WAPI. That is in uh, Surat at Udna. Uh, Udna ka. So 
Uh, that, that is still running. We have any business there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, roughly, what kind of turnover we are doing there per quarter? We, I think, we were, we were noting at about uh, 10 to 12, 15 crores something. Yeah, yeah, we are in that range only. And uh, I believe we were also doing uh, domestic volumes for uh, Arcelor Mittal. So that is that is the volume which are re which we are doing from Udna, and it has a weekly re uh, sorry uh, quarterly realization of uh, 12 to 15 years. So the entire thing is only Arcelor Mittal. There's no other business that we are doing there. No, there is no other business. That number is uh, you know like uh, going to stay the same. Is there any increase? Anything? Nothing. So we are trying to uh, increase the share, but uh, as as of now, you can say that number is going to be uh, constant in in that range only. Okay. Um, I'm sorry for the impatience, but uh, yeah. the thing is, with the revenue breakup, it would be really easier for us to understand what exactly happening, because every every quarterly investor presentation does have, and it's right in front of me. That every quarterly breakup, the revenue breakup is given for each area or each business that you have. Uh, if you can take some time out and please give me the breakup, it will be really helpful. Because uh, anyway, already the investors are uh, impatient with uh, the stock price that you guys have, you know, kept at and the price, the way the business is happening. At least this number, if you can give, it will be helpful. So. Uh, and like I said earlier as well, we will get back to you after uh, after this call. Yeah, I do not have the numbers handy with uh, me. But okay. we are um, what kind of turnover we done in the first quarter in Wapi? Sorry, I mean uh, in Murbi. Yeah. Yeah, so Vapi, Vapi typically has been... Not Vapi, uh, sorry, Morbi, Morbi. So Morbi is, like I said, Morbi is in the uh, uh, is in the growth stage, growth uh, phase. What we have done in the last quarter, what we have done in the last quarter is about, uh, not about, is exactly 7,674 TUs of export and 1,183 TUs of import. So this is the figure which I read out in my uh, uh, in my speech as well, in my presentation as well. I don't know whether you are referring to this or uh, is there any specific... No, in, in terms of revenue, sir. In terms of revenue, you can take the last quarter was somewhere in the ballpark of, uh, let's say, uh, 18 to 25 uh, CR. I, like I said, I do not have the, the wow. exact figures with me. Yeah. Okay, so I we will get back to you with the exact figures. Hello. Thank you Hello. so much. Uh, well, we'll take the next question from the line of Miraj from Arihant Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question. I just had one uh, question. In uh, do we have any guidance? Do we give any guidance? in terms of uh, volumes or uh, value? Mm, guidance uh, for? Going ahead in terms of performance uh, for FI24 and 25 for full year. Yeah, so uh, as uh, Captain has already given uh, guidance, but uh, I will again tell you that now since the monsoon is over, uh, we foresee uh, we have a uh, positive outlook on the uh, domestic movement. We foresee uh, the movement of the number of trains which uh, had come down will increase. Uh, overall uh, increase in the domestic side, uh, I foresee to uh, have it in the range of 10 to 15 percent. And uh, CFS business is going to be exactly the way things are going. If export quota opens up, we foresee the export numbers will uh, grow and it will grow exactly in the same manner how and how we've been performing earlier. So if uh, sugar quota opens up, we see this number jumping to at least 25 to 30 percent. If we see only rice uh, op getting opened up, 
it will increase by another 5%. So that is the kind of uh, guidance what we can give right from here. As far as Morbi is concerned, we are seeing Morbi, the imports are increasing in a decent way. Uh, I, my estimation, best estimation is that our growth is going to be in line of around 15 to 20 percent for Mori in terms of imports as well as exports. Got it. Okay. Thank you. If I have any further questions, I'll get back in queue. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, as there are no further questions, I would like to hand over the conference to Mr. Vikram Suryavanshi from Philip Capital India Private Limited. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, we thank the management of Nokar Corporation for give us, giving us an opportunity to host the call and taking time out for interaction with the stakeholder. Thank you all for being on the call. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. On behalf of Philip Capital India Private Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.